Okay, here we are, ready for the second lecture here on Chapter 20, Enzymes and Vitamins. Uh, hopefully that first lecture uh, got the basics of enzymes and substrates uh, uh, at least approachable for you, and you're ready to uh, build on that knowledge with uh, some more details about enzymes. Okay, we're still not quite ready for the vitamins. In this lecture, we're going to focus instead on the classification of those enzymes that we learned so much about last time. Now, fortunately, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, the naming of enzymes is not bad at all, but I guess specifically we'll go ahead and address that again here in this second lecture. The name of an enzyme, first of all, usually ends in ACE, so that's how you can identify enzymes quite easily. Uh, it identifies the reacting substance. So, for example, the example that we actually used in the previous lecture, sucrase catalyzes the reaction of sucrose, in particular the hydrolysis, as we discussed last time. Uh, the name also describes the function of the enzyme. For example, oxidases catalyze oxidation. Uh, so that would be the class of enzyme that we're dealing with. Uh, it can also be a common name, and uh, particularly for those digestive enzymes that have been known for quite a while, uh, such as pepsin and trypsin, uh, also are uh, one of our earliest known uh, enzymes, catalase, uh, has now been changed to hydrogen peroxidase to fit with these uh, naming conventions that talk about the substrate that's being acted on. But you'll see catalase quite a bit, and uh, hopefully you'll just remember that that one uh, is actually modern naming of hydrogen peroxidase. And we talked about that in organic chemistry, that these common names will persist uh, because those are the names that uh, the scientists uh, that have been around a while know when they teach the new scientists. and. Uh, we just never quite get to the point where we're following totally the um, preferred naming convention. Okay, so we said that we're going to look at classification of enzymes, and here it is. Enzymes are classified by the types of reaction they catalyze. So uh, here we have classes such as oxidoreductases, and they <laughs> catalyze oxidation reduction reactions, logically enough. Transferases, transfer groups of atoms. Uh, hydro hydrolases, uh, uh, catalyze hydrolysis reactions, uh, lyases, uh, add or remove atoms to or from a double bond, uh, isomerases, rearrange atoms, we know what isomers are, so that makes sense, and then ligases use ATP to combine small molecules, so those are major classes and the types of reactions that those classes of enzymes catalyze. Okay, so if we look at examples of the oxidoreductases and transferases, here uh, in Table 20.2, we see that the oxidoreductases catalyze oxidation reduction reactions. We recall from uh, General Organic Biochemistry 1 that uh, we can't have oxidation occur without reduction, uh, although uh, we tend to focus on the oxidation in biological chemistry. So the oxidases catalyze the oxidation of a compound, uh, typically by increasing the number of bonds to oxygen. The dehydrogenases catalyze the uh, removal or addition of two hydrogen atoms. So removal of hydrogen we associate with oxidation, addition of hydrogen we associate with reduction. So that's uh, what we're looking for in that uh, realm. And we see here a specific reaction, ethanol uh, and uh, the coenzyme NAD+, in the presence of the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase uh, forms ethanol. We've taken that uh, ethanol and oxidize the alcohol to an aldehyde uh, plus uh, now we've reduced the NAD plus to NADH uh, plus H plus so there we have it oxidation of ethanol reduction of the NAD plus uh, and that's our reaction catalyzed by alcohol dehydrogenase for a transferase, uh, we catalyze the transfer of a functional group between two compounds. Uh, so we can have either transaminases, which catalyze the transfer of an amino group from one compound to another, uh, as well as kinases, which catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups. So we see here alanine uh, plus alpha-ketoglutarate uh, in an alanine transaminase reaction uh, is in equilibrium with pyruvate uh, plus glutamate. So there we see we've uh, done a transamination and uh, we've taken the alanine uh, amino group and we've added it to the alpha-ketoglutarate to form uh, glutamate. So there you have it, uh, an example of a specific type of transferase. All right, let's turn our attention now to hydrolases and lyases. Uh, so uh, in 
Continuing in table 20.2, we have number three, hydrolases, uh, and those catalyze hydrolysis, which is the addition of H2O reactions that split a compound into two products. So we see our polypeptide uh, C-terminal end uh, plus water in the presence of a peptidase, uh, which uh, will give a shorter chain polypeptide and then the amino acid from that C-terminal end. So we're chopping things off one by one. This is how we find those primary structures, by the way, uh, if you were wondering last chapter, how we did coded the primary structure uh, for insulin. It was by uh, the use of these uh, peptidases or at least hydrolysis reactions. Uh, and uh, the types of uh, hydrolases that we tend to see, we have examples of peptidases like the peptidase we see here to catalyze the hydrolysis of peptide bonds in polypeptides or proteins uh, and the lipases which catalyze the hydrolysis of ester bonds in lipids. If you remember that chapter a few chapters back now. Uh, and then we turn our attention now to the lyases, which catalyze the addition or removal of a group without hydrolysis. Uh, so we can have either decarboxylases, which catalyze the removal of CO2, or deaminases, which catalyze the removal of NH3. Uh, and we see here in uh, particular, we have pyruvate uh, in the presence of uh, H and the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase can uh, give rise to ethanol and carbon dioxide. So ethanol, as you probably noticed from the previous slide, uh, being an oxidation product of ethanol, now we have it as uh, a um, decarboxylase product of pyruvate. Okay, our last classes of enzymes from table 20.2, we have our isomerases and our ligases. Uh, so uh, up at the top, we have the isomerases, which catalyze the rearrangement of atoms within a molecule to form an isomer. Uh, so isomerases catalyze the conversion between cis to trans bonds, where uh, epimerases uh, catalyze the conversion of D to L isomers. All right, so we see here uh, in our specific example, uh, we take maleate uh, in the presence of maleate isomerase to form uh, fumarate, which is, uh, again, an example of an isomerase catalyzing that conversion between cis and trans bonding. All right. Uh, then if we move on to our final classification, ligases, uh, those catalyze the joining of two molecules using ATP energy. And that could be um, examples include the synthi synthetases, say these right correctly. Uh, they catalyze the combination of two molecules and the carboxylases catalyze the addition of CO2. So uh, we see here pyruvate, uh, plus CO2 plus ATP, uh, which is our energy source driving this thing, in the presence of pyruvate carboxylase uh, forms oxaloacetate uh, plus ADP plus a phosphate group plus uh, um, some hydrogen protons. So there we have it, an example of a carboxylase where we added CO2 to pyruvate to form oxaloacetate. So we covered a lot of ground in this brief lecture, and let's uh, end it as we often do with a learning check here. So you're asked to match the type of reaction with an enzyme, and so there we have our choices, one, two, three, four, and then our letters A, B, C, D. So go ahead and match those up as best you can. Stop the video here if you need a moment to do that, and start us back up when you're ready to check your work. Good luck. Okay, so we see here that uh, a uh, says converts a cis fatty acid to a trans fatty acid. Uh, well, that's uh, three in isomerase. We talked about those as being able to convert between cis and trans or uh, to for the uh, epimerases to be able to convert between D and L isomers. For B, we remove two H atoms to form a double bond. Uh, well, that's an example of a dehydrogenase. We're removing hydrogen. So uh, number two is the best uh, answer choice for that uh, B line. Uh, for C, combines two molecules to make a new compound. That's a synthetase. Uh, it's um, our synthesis reaction from back in General Organic Biochem 1. And then finally, D adds uh, ammonia. That would be number one, an aminase. So hopefully those were pretty easy for you to assign. Uh, and if you did make any mistakes, hopefully uh, it's clear to you know now why uh, we um, have the correct answer choices as we do. Uh, if that's not the case, if you're struggling and you do need some help, please reach out to me. Otherwise, if things are going well, we'll see you in the next lecture of chapter 20.